Okay. To be successful, it has to be relevant. Uh, it has to be seen as delivering value. And one of the uh, uh, values of AHSB is that it is recognized around the world uh, as being the highest recognition of a business school. So that uh, is, is a factor. Uh, sustainability is uh, uh, a little more of a question of can the school maintain it, and, and uh, uh, that will be one of the questions in, in the process and, and uh, uh, addressed here later. Uh, has to be credible, and the point there being consistent with the school's identity. And that's a very important component uh, in my perspective about ACSB, and that is ACSB accreditation is is uh, primarily based on the mission of the school. So what a school is expected to do to be accredited is influenced by the definition by the school of their respective mission. So we will address that uh, in more detail as we go through. Uh, which, by definition here, uh, allows a uh, uh, differentiation in the marketplace. Two schools can be ACB accredited in the same community and be recognized as different, both with quality uh, as documented by the ACSB accreditation process, but also recognize that they have different missions. At Rockers, we see ourselves as a um, learning-centered institution. The old expression was teaching. Uh, whereas uh, University of Kansas, which is very close to us, uh, has a doctor program and defines themselves as a research-based institution. So we're in the similar community, both ACSB credit, but two different schools uh, with different missions. Uh, that's kind of a repeat here. Um, okay, ACSB. The ACSB's mission statement identifies itself as seeking to advance quality management education worldwide through accreditation and thought leadership. As I said before, it is recognized, uh, at least most of us, as being the global accreditor of business schools. There are other organizations. Uh, probably shouldn't mention them, but there are two that are actually headquartered uh, in Overland Park, Kansas. I drive by their headquarters every day. Um, but uh, neither of them uh, have the, uh, the uh, uh, worldwide recognition. In fact, neither of them has particularly the domestic. Uh, recognition. Uh, we've had a number of schools that were accredited by these others who used that while they were seeking ACSB accreditation. Um, but it's uh, perhaps an issue. We do have some websites. Uh, I think these are still current. Um, but you can obtain a, a uh, much more uh, explicit background on the value of, of uh, accreditation, publications, materials. Um, and uh, we have all sorts of PowerPoints. We have some here today, and I know mine are available. Just give me a, an email, and I'll send them to you, and I'm sure uh, the panelists here would also do the same. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the creation process. I have attended the annual meeting for 25 straight years. I'm sorry? Uh, change, okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mention that is because I have been around to see where it has gone through three different stages of accreditation, and I think it's, it's worth uh, mentioning. Uh, you may recognize this is a few years old, but this was taken in Hong Kong, uh, uh, so uh, I always like to do that. Before 1993, the ACSB was what uh, many of us referred to as input-oriented. It was very much focused on the number of PhDs, uh, how many books in your library. Uh, we used to even have to file the uh, salaries and show that our salaries were competitive and comparative uh, as an accredited school. The uh, interesting thing is that... Um, personal observation, but about this time we had the influence of Jesuit schools. Uh, Tom Bausch, among others, many of you may know him, was president of ACSB, and during his rise in 
Series B, uh, and he was not alone, but uh, was uh, significant that, began the question, were inputs sufficient, or are we not really interested in the outcomes? And N93 was the first time that the ACSB changed the perspective to a mission-driven uh, orientation. Prior to 93, no matter what high school, uh, what your mission was, you still had the same uh, requirements for uh, all these input credentials, uh, per capita, library books, and salaries, and so forth. In 93, we changed it, and I differentiate here between, uh, uh, between 93 and 2003, where the role of outcomes changed. In the process now, and Rockhurst was uh, accredited in the first year that this process was uh, um, applied. And so we were, uh, well, I was told the first school, and certainly among the first, to be accredited under the current system. So mission-driven, and then outcomes-based, documenting that the outcomes, particularly the learning outcomes, the, uh, which we'll hear more about later, were consistent with the mission. And then the processes documented to show or demonstrate that the qualities demonstrated would continue and in fact improve. So those are the key three elements of HSB accreditation as seen by me. Mission driven, doctoral granting institution is expected to do and have different outcomes different uh, standards, uh, or at least uh, uh, elements of it, than schools that are um, not uh, research-oriented. Um, and you have to have outcomes to demonstrate you're achieving those things. And then the process needs to continue. This is a, a chart that we developed at Rockhurst to try to give some explanation to how it all fits. It's confusing. I actually thin, thin this up this little bit. But what I'm going to point out here is that the mission of the institution is a foundation that influences the expected, expected roles of faculty. Okay? Now, defining the role of the faculty, which is going to be consistent with the nature of the mission, is the qualifications of the faculty. So faculty who are teaching graduate courses are expected to have qualifications that are uh, stronger than those that only teach undergraduate. So there's a linkage there. And there is a linkage in the way resources are allocated, both to the individual and also in how you evaluate the outcomes. So it's a very much an interactive process. The mission defines expectations of the curriculum, of the learning. The mission defines the expectations of the faculty credentials. And the use of resources should be supportive of both. I'm glad to talk about work. Uh, this is another chart. I think this I, I borrowed from uh, Chief Accreditation Officer um, uh, in a recent conference. It also shows how the linkage of the mission to the contributions, research outcomes, to faculty credentials and sufficiency, and how you allocate the faculty. So again, the processes and the requirements are only related, and again, always mission driven. Um, alignment with mission brings you to the of heaven. Okay. Over to you. On this note, I will now pass it over to uh, Ms. Peacock, who will now go into more specific 